Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts.
and He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, He is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. He Let us pray. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise your matchless name for your power, for your goodness, for your love, for the victory over sin and the grave. And we pray, God, that as we worship you tonight, that you will enable us to share in that wonderful victory that Christ has won for us. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen.
reading from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 20, reading from verse 10 to 18. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus was lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of Christ. We praise Christ for his holy word. Amen. I serve the
that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in God's sight, now and always. Amen. I want to draw our attention this evening to words found in John chapter 20, verses 13 to 15. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When he, she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? I've entitled the message tonight, Turning Weeping to Joy. Turning Weeping to Joy. One of Bob Marley's most loved and enduring songs is No Woman, No Cry. This was a call to a woman in Bob's life to be positive and not to worry about the bad times. The song goes on to say, In this bright future, you can't forget your past. So dry your tears, I say. End of quote. In contrast, Mary Magdalene was weeping and neither the angels nor the man she thought was the gardener told her not to cry. Rather than telling her not to cry, Jesus called her by her name. She recognized him, reached out to hold him. He told her not to hold him but instead sent her on a mission. So the vignette ended with the weeping mourner turned jubilant and excited evangelist. She went with excitement and announced the good news to the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She was obedient to Jesus' commission. That's what happened when weeping turns to joy. Today is Resurrection Lord's Day, and Jesus comes to each of us today or during our darkest and most painful hour and asks the same question, Why are you weeping? Young man, young woman, why are you crying? Big man, Big woman, why are you crying? Young child, youth, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? My sisters and brothers, there is an abundance of weeping across our world. Men, women, youth, children of Gaza, Ukraine, South Sudan, Haiti, Barbados, James Street, Spicetown Circuit, are weeping. Families weeping because they have lost loved ones due to violence, due to police abuse, accidents, sickness. Those who are dying from starvation are weeping. Individuals are weeping because of domestic problems with their spouse, with children, with neighbors, with finances. People are weeping because of a life-threatening illness. Whoever you are and whatever your reason for crying, your grief is real. But that's not the end of the story. The psalmist wrote, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. On this day of unimaginable and unexpected hope, Jesus asks, Why are you weeping? Jesus knows your name and your situation. The message this evening 
is that like Mary, your weeping can turn to joy when you know the truth, realize that Jesus is with you, and have a new purpose. First of all, when you know the truth. You see, lack of or insufficient knowledge intensifies our grief and deepens our pain. Mary knew the body was missing, but she did not know where it was or how it was removed. She said to the angels, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. I do not know where they have laid him. When she saw the man, she did not know that it was Jesus. She did not know. However, the situation was not as it seemed. Jesus was alive. He walked out of his clothes out of the tomb, unaided. Mary did not know, and the lack of knowledge distorted reality. Sometimes it is unreasonable to tell someone who is hurting, don't cry. We all grieve differently. We all have our particular grief. Our hurt is real. But often the pain is deepened when we are hopeless, when we don't know. When our daughter died in 2009, I preached at her funeral. Why? Because in August of 2008, while we were on vacation, at about 1.30 a.m. while I was watching the news in the living room, she came out of her room where she was sleeping, crying, and she said to me, quote, Daddy, I just realized how much God loves me. Daddy, I just realized how much God loves me. One night in 2009, while she was in hospital, and I was traveling to the hospital, the Holy Spirit gave me the text, Job 1, 21. Quote, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When she eventually transitioned, I used that verse as the text from which I preached. Why? Because I was convinced that she was with God. And knowing the truth did not lessen the pain. It did not lessen the pain but it helped me to cope. Friends, knowing the truth helps us turn our weeping into joy. Secondly, when we realize Jesus is with us, when we realize Jesus is with us, our weeping can turn to joy when we remember that Jesus is with us in our situation. It was the risen Jesus standing beside the weeping Mary. She thought it was the gardener and she, who asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She was overwhelmed with grief and probably in her tear-blurred eyes didn't see or didn't even look into the face of the man who had spoken. And she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. When Jesus called her by her name, Mary, she recognized that the person standing beside her all this while, so close to her, was indeed Jesus so close that she tried to grab him. Her dearly beloved friend, Jesus. Friends, Jesus was standing beside her and she did not 
recognize him. However, she knew his voice. And as soon as he called her name, she recognized him. It was Jesus who said, My sheep knows my voice. The voice of God is always most quickly recognized, heard and recognized by the hearts that know and love him. Jesus is alive. The one we desire, the one of whom we say, I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. The one who can turn our mourning into dancing. The one who can turn our water into wine, our weeping to joy. That one is right beside you. Brothers and sisters, we are not alone. That is the same for every single person hearing my voice tonight. We are never alone. The risen Lord is here. The risen Lord is with you in your present situation. No matter where you are right now, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're doing, Jesus is there. David said, Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yes, my dear listeners, Jesus said that he will be with you always, even to the end of the age, and he is with you. The chorus says, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives in my heart. He walks with me, He talks with me along life's narrow way. Yes, our weeping can turn to joy when we know that Jesus is with us. And thirdly, when we have a new purpose in life. Weeping and grief will turn to joy when we understand that we have a purpose in life and commit ourselves to that purpose. Mary was so excited to have Jesus that she proceeded to grab him. But Jesus didn't want her to hold him. Rather than allowing Mary to hold on to him in the graveyard, Jesus sent her on her first mission. Verse 17 says, Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus, in essence, told her, Don't just stand there. Don't just hug me. It's time to get all excited. Get those feet moving. It is time to broadcast the good news. The mourner turned missionary and went and told the others that she had seen and heard the Lord. Her weeping turned to joy. She went to the tomb to put spices on Jesus' body. And when she realized that he was alive, she tried to hold him. However, a new day had dawned for her, and she had a new purpose and a new mission. As we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the message is, I am alive. I've conquered death. Yes, submit to me. Yes, love me. But now go. Go and tell those others who are weeping that death has been defeated and they can enjoy everlasting life. All around us, my dear brothers and sisters, are individuals who are being lost. People who are heavy laden, lonely, hungry, depressed, suicidal. We need to go. 
We need to go and declare the victory of our Lord. We need to go and announce the news that Jesus Christ is alive. The resurrection of Jesus and the possibility of life more abundantly for everyone is not something to hold on to. The resurrection of Jesus and the possibility of life more abundantly for everyone, that's not something for us to hold on to. We need to release the news wherever men, women, boys and girls are found. We need to joyfully and confidently give the wind a mighty voice that Jesus saves. Jesus is alive. Jesus saves. Yes, weeping, turning to joy. In conclusion, on that first Easter morn, Mary's weeping turned to joy when she realized that Jesus, who they crucified and buried, was alive and is today alive. He rose a victor from the dark domain. Our weeping, of which there is a lot in the world, can turn to joy when we know the truth. When we know the truth. When we realize that Jesus is with us in our respective situations. When we understand our purpose in life. Are you weeping over a situation that seems hopeless? Look to Jesus, who is right beside you. Listen to his still, small voice. Listen as he calls your name. And allow him to transform you. Because as Niem Calloway said, quote, God can take your darkest hour and turn it into your brightest hour. Be at peace. He can turn any situation around. Be at peace. He can turn any situation around. May God bless you as you go forth. And may you recognize that your weeping, the pain that you're feeling even now can turn to joy as you know the truth, as you recognize that Jesus is with you and as you seek and find your purpose in life. For Christ's sake, amen.
And so, most gracious God, as you hear the call and the cries of those people who are in this moment turning to you, you have promised, Lord God, through your Son Jesus, that when we call upon you in his name, you will hear and answer our prayers. And so, God, I pray now for all those who are weeping, for whatever reason they are weeping, that, Lord God, as they look to you and as they reach out to you, that you will enable them to recognize that you are with them and that you'll never leave them or forsake them. And, O oh God, that you'll direct their paths from henceforth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I commit these, your children, into your hands and pray for your blessings now and always. Amen. Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.